Good morning, everyone. I'll call the regular school board meeting to order of the Oaks Public School District 41. It's Tuesday, February 8th, 2022 at 7.01 a.m. And we are at the SRCTC conference room. Um, I'll call the meeting to order and we'll stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe there's a slide okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The agenda was in your packet. Is there anything that needs to be added? We aren't aware of anything we need to add this morning. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So, I'm about moves to approve. Is there a second? Sorry. Um, Thorpe seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion on the approval of the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, we have with us for visitors today uh, Mr. Rothman and Mr. Spillover from the Southeast Region Career Tech Center here uh, in the conference room with us, as well as Brandon Beta and myself. And who's joining us remotely? Madison Taylor. Madison Taylor. So welcome everyone and thank you for attending. Public communications. Um, there, uh, there were a couple of cards. Uh, there were one card, a thank you card from the family of Arlene Neal. Um, and then three um, shout outs. You want to go through those quickly? And there were three more that came yesterday. Yeah. So one was for um, Kayla Marido, I can never say words before. Marodi, always say them backwards. Um, is a wonderful teacher in her class. Is very fun. Uh, is a great learner experience. If you have uh, a book one to ten, I would give her a class of hundred of out of ten. And another one for Miss Marodi um, is the best teacher ever. She knows how to teach a class with no problem, and her class was fun. Next one is I wanted to send out that one for admin to make the decision to cancel the game not to travel on January 18th. I realized that it was a very difficult decision, but I wanted you to all know I sincerely appreciate the safety that was put in the four sports. Thank you for ultimately deciding to keep our kids safe on that one. Um, and then there was one, a couple, three more that came in through email. Blackboard wasn't working. First one was a shout out to Nikki and Bobby Knodel. They treat our athletes from injuries that are there teaching them how to prevent further injuries. They take the time to get to know injured athletes and figure out how to help them, him or her, with individual treatment plans. It's um, good stuff. But thank you, Bobby and Nikki, for sharing your professional skills with our student athletes. Next one goes up to Snapkey. When everyone else says no, she said yes to announcing for the girls' basketball game on, on her birthday. Then after the game, since she was not able to tell, not able to tell the concession volunteers how to close up, she had had another hour of work to get everything her way. This is another example of Miss Happy going above and beyond for our school, and we wanted to thank her for that. Next one, we will give a shout out to the playground attendants, Miss Hagan, Miss Smollingbrook. Miss O'Brien, special thanks to these ladies for building up, great bundling up and monitoring playground every day, and especially when it is so cold, very cold out. Thank you very much. Thank you to those that submitted shout outs. With that, we'll move on to our annual presentation from the Southeast Region Career and Tech Center. We're happy to meet here at the center in February. For CTE Month. Years because it's CTE Month. Excited to have you guys in the house. Uh, feel free to drop in and look at any of the program classes. Well, we like to visit. This is something that uh, Dan Root initially started um, way back as the center director. And uh, 
he did tell me to tell all of you hi. Uh, that was something he did. He did say, I tell him hi, boss. Yep, hi, boss. Yeah. <laughs> he always does that Probably. to all the board members. So, um, with that being said, um, I'm Dan Spellberg. I've uh, been in the role since July 1. It's been a transition process for me, and uh, I enjoyed it. And uh, it's growing every day. I'd say that this is a, is a educational leader. So, give you a little update about our center. And uh, I think it's a good opportunity for you guys to ask questions if you have questions as board members about what we can help you buy for CTE opportunities for your students. So, take a look. <clears throat> Here's our, our current list of programs classes, instructors. Some of these instructors are based out of Wapiti. Like I said, we do have 14 member schools. It does uh, cover pretty much swamps here in southeast North Dakota. Some quick facts. You can look on the back page there. Uh, a little over 1,700 students in the center system. This school year, so we're excited about that. And more or less, we provide services for grade 7 through 12. Some services so, let me know what the school is, what your needs are, and what it looks like best for you. Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing you guys have all yeah, like done the choice ready rubric and something that moving forward, I think it's the 20 or this year's freshman class uh, will now basically utilize this as a framework for their scholarship moving forward. Um, we'll just determine if students are choice ready and what scholarship for them. So uh, there used to be an academic and a CTE scholarship. Now it's just going to be a full scholarship that's forward. And so after going to this choice ready, uh, it really does the kids have some options to check some boxes. And after looking at this, I said, well, the CTE work I'm going to help them check as many of these boxes as they can so these kids can be ready. So after going through, <clears throat> but this is the, here's other things on the choice ready things that we are going to center help your, help your Principals, counselors, check those boxes um, under each of those respective areas because uh, those are the things that we're helping provide for the students. One of the biggest things is the CRPs, career ready practices. We've been doing this for six, seven years really since then, but really uh, took it on. Uh, Bismarck and the center were, were the first people that did it. And just about doing it twice a year, and now it's expected. And so we've got the system in place. Our instructors know what they're doing as far as evaluating. It's a one to four scale. What it's ranking is your soft skills. You know, how is your phone conversation? Um, are you have a disagreements we get get along? Uh, it's those small things that students need. To be successful. So those are the CRPs, and it's like I said, a scale from one to four, four being so uh, one being you should definitely work on it. So we've been sending those home to parents for so no questions. I think kids know what those are, and maybe some of your parents have seen them a couple of So <clears throat> one of the things that I'm kind of most excited about. Um, Right away, when put the round uh, in the center here, they said, Well, there's a really cool grant opportunity that we've never seen a CTE before for this capacity. And the state of North Dakota was fortunate to receive some, some federal funds and uh, uh, to enhance CTE center and CTE programming. And so 
to the tune of 80 million dollars uh, across the state. And uh, we put an application in. Our application is to strengthen some of our programs and uh, build some additional facilities. So you can kind of see my priority listing uh, where the priorities lie. The direct benefits for both students. Directness comes up all books under priority number three, where we have different rotational units for transferring to a bed. Um, just like our mobile needs lab that we have. Uh, we're looking at adding a precision ag lab. We're looking at adding uh, additional equipment to our ambulance so that can be utilized as a, as a health trainer, as well as an advanced manufacturing lab. And so those are some of the vocational labs that all of our students hopefully will be able to have access to. And so uh, we want a little bit more about each of those uh, specific So this is, yeah, these pages kind of just talk a little bit about that grant. Um, actually, these are about three pages out of the 165 page application. So uh, well, we should know more by the end of uh, this month, truthfully, whether or not we're um, not just to receive some of those funds. It's an dollar dollar match. So hopeful, but uh, there's some good things. We have our scholarship data, and this is based on the 2020 uh, one students, and uh, that uh, 11 students last year get a scholarship. The very first one was so 35 percent below the average state average. Day. Um, and there is some concern with this new choice ready with some of the requirements and we discussed it with our cohort of counselors and the um, the ASVAB requirements through. So basically schools like I mean, 10 or 12 kids that would qualify with one or two people get that benchmark. So you got to take a look at that impact with uh, the state. So that's the way you got to be. Uh, you got to have 85, I believe, on that, right? Yeah. yeah. And the number of kids that are in that score. And so we're, we're doing what we can with our counselors to give them some historical data of what has qualified, what their scores have been, to make sure that there's some kind of picture that can set that benchmark up for the years. So they are anticipating a legislative bill to go through. So, um, as far as programming goes, the types of pathways that we provide to the different schools that we work with. Um, you guys got a beautiful facility here in Oaks, and uh, it's good to have to, to take a look at the pathways. So, uh, they're all listed there. They've got some online options where they've got some IPD options, or there's some. Possible credit, lots of different options, I'm sure. SAEs, every summer uh, we have our agricultural instructors on summer SAEs, meaning that um, they ideally work with your students and you can make a visit out and talk with the employer and just see how those employees or those students are doing it. 
it's really those on-the-job training skills that uh, we encourage kids last summer. Uh, but this is where last year almost over, almost hit the two million dollar mark. Uh, our students are hurt. Uh, it's the southeast. That's pretty. Well, so, and then the nuts and bolts of what it actually costs to be involved in the center, as well as all the other programs that you see here. And uh, it's mentioned that he, he makes it a goal to always keep it under three percent. And um, those hands uh, want to continue to provide good service for our river schools and what we're getting, and we want to keep that uh, increase in the local possible. So that was your increase last year. That's, that's the top all we did. Definitely ask. Um, but Mr. Brockman is going to tell you a little bit about our high tech units. That we have available, and uh, this item is under embedded in a lot of our classes out here. Uh, several of your instructors are from high school. Uh, yeah, just go back to the assessment piece. Um, you guys are aware that uh, Mrs. Brecker did resign, and we did accept her resignation. So we are looking for a council to turn. But the Mr. Record only here four days a week and then the council position five days a week. So Seth will probably go up and to cover the extra day for council. So Seth will go up. Might be more than the two or three percent of the center just to cover that. So we have uh, yeah, on the uh, high tech equipment, uh, not a lot of use up at the high school. We do have a couple of teachers that use four units. Um, we had a former science teacher that used the analog table uh, and some of the other the biotech, those type of things. And currently, your science position is uh, up in the air a little bit, so um, not as much use for the science. Oh, here at the center, we have some teachers that are using those. Currently, we are going to be getting a couple new placement gravers. That is a, a real big use or a high use. We have a lot of teachers that are using the current units we have. We have to run a hose and vent outside. Uh, these new units are actually all going to be self contained. The filters and everything are in the unit. So library and use it, you're not going to get any of those units. So it's going to be a lot better for those kinds of situations. It's not going to be possible to run the post of that out the window and let the use of the area. So, um, also with the high tech, I'm sure that you guys are aware that we did have an incident with our fan. Um, we did lose a couple pieces of equipment in there that trying to salvage. One of them is definitely not going to be salvageable the other one. We have a big piece. We don't know yet. Probably going to have to send it in and have a redone on it. But the driver, thankfully, walked away. Equipment can be replaced. Hey, you guys have any questions? Any questions about any of the services or um, offerings that uh, the center provides? I want to give a few shout outs as well. Uh, Ms. Johnson, first year instructor, uh, raised uh, $18,000 for the Keep Mind in Mind project uh, that I think directly benefit. Awesome, pretty exciting. Uh, it's like to see those kids be passionate about getting out there in the community. Uh, so, great. 
balance of the So, props to those guys, kids, and and I think it's all the kids that. So I remember getting the crew and practices report in their early adult years. Some of the board members don't have students in uh, CTE at, at that level yet. And I find it interesting if we can provide an example, not, not the multi page example, but one or two pages of what they think they see what they look like. And I, just, it, I always thought it, it really looked like. The teachers probably have to invest quite a bit of time into doing this where you know I realize it's something that they don't just say one day, well, I'm gonna sit down and evaluate this. It's something that we have to be paying attention to throughout the semester and how the class experience and, and serve and, and faithfully, diligently report right. what they're seeing in some manner before they complete it. So it is it's time consuming, but it's an interesting report. So also, I know on your your the grant application, you said it was a 50 50 match. Um, can you share any of the partners? You think you have the, the, the matches partners lined up, so you're partnering with community employers or organizations. Can you share any more about that? Those relationships? So a big share of them will directly impact some specific schools in our area. Um, Expansion project that we're working on. So there's school districts. Some of that, uh, Hankinson, we'll get at a high school at that point. Um, facility because they have a number of CTP. So we're looking at impact there. So <clears throat> their community development groups over there. Their economic development groups. School itself over there. So, um, financially, there is similar partnership groups like this looking at working with us over there. Our partners over there, different industry partners over there that we have in our application. And then, specifically with our vocational units, uh, Rona. They have <clears throat> indicated that they're working, willing to work with us and get us as much equipment as we can to provide some remote units um, to go through and plan it. We and I are in the shop here, but they can sell that type of equipment. And so say some local partners. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people in limbo right now. They're they've got checks waiting, but yeah, there's uh, in I know a lot of schools probably went out hammer hard hard more on their economic development. But uh, a lot of folks directly specific schools or two part of it. 
Wait, any other questions? Yeah, it's it's actually pretty similar. We have more freshmen out here, freshmen out here. They have been in the past in classes in general. So we started that out with essentials and we have freshmen out here for a semester before that. The different group comes, they still have some students. But it's our PE that they can drop. Say probably just an outside of what you have now. I think probably as strong as it can be. Yeah. 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 Anything else? If not, thank you, gentlemen, for both being here and for your continued good work with the center and for our students. If you guys ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right. With that, we'll move on to the administrative reports. Um, let the records show that they really got this report in um, on, that, on time. Oh, I want to play the second, third, 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 something Shout out to Dave Rowland for getting this report in. And it was, it was an interesting report. Um, I did find it interesting that we are, I have two buses that are waiting for repair parts to come from. And so some boat bottom up and down off the most of California or something. So supply chain issues are affecting us. Any other questions or comments on the administrative reports or anything you think should especially be highlighted? Any questions or comments, board members? If not, is there a motion to approve the administrative reports as presented? So, Nagel moves to approve the administrative reports. Is there a second? I'm up seconds. Is there any discussion? Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. All right, we have action items. Uh, the open enrollment application, this is a carryover from last month when it was originally applied as a tuition agreement. Tuition. Uh, so this is for our consideration for the 2022-3 school year. Um, is there any recommendation with regard to this? Um, there's actually two. The first one. Oh, right, right. Yeah. There are two. The first one is the one from last month. And I talked to the parents, and they are still planning to move into our district. They're not going to move to our district, but they want to come to school in our district. So we would have time to prepare for that and make some arrangements for that. Given the proof now, obviously, we will make it in the end of the school year. The second one is one that was just if I remember correctly, just on the side of our district boundaries. I think we can have one school here that another area that would be more security bounds. All right, so is there a motion to approve these two open enrollment applications for uh, the next school year? Well, they, they, they're ongoing. I mean, they, if once they're, they've made an application and it's ongoing, unless, we, unless they move a request to withdraw. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion regarding these two open enrollment applications? I'm but moves to approve the two open enrollment applications. Yeah. Is there a second? Nagel seconds. Is there any discussion? 
there any discussion? Any discussion on the open enrollment applications? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Um, next, uh, we do need to take action to set the date of our 2022 school board election. In town position currently held by Ryan Rosendahl is the position in which the term ends in. Um, end of the school year and uh, we need to approve the election calendar. Do you want to comment on this? Yep. So um, if we we're following previous years, it would be the first Tuesday, which is June 7th of 2022. Um, and so that would be the election date. Uh, and then I don't know by March 5th. Um, I have to put the notice in the paper to so say the election date and position. Okay, and usually the, the school board association puts out an example, yep. which has to, you know, if, if they, they might have put that the, the school board election was on June 14th, mm -hmm. and then we would have to adjust the yep. dates accordingly. But this year they, they chose to use our preferred date. So this would be the calendar. So is there a motion then to the, the proper motion would be to set the school board election? Or June the 7th, 2022. Yep. Okay, is there such a motion? Oh. Dork moves to set the school board election date for June 7th of 2022. Is there a second? I must second. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any discussion regarding the school board date? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. And we will all be disappointed to hear there's no school policy to review today. I, you know, that caught my attention. Like, hey, like, <laughs> still alive. Maybe last the minute there would be, but no, we didn't get the Wait yeah. until That's next it. month. <laughs> okay, so with that, we'll move on to uh, the approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Is there a uh, Motion to approve the minutes of the January 11th meeting. Nagel moves to approve the minutes of the January 11th meeting. Is there a second? second. Thorpe seconds. Any discussion? Did he notice any? It's nice to see Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Minutes are approved. Um, next, we'll consider the three historical financial reports, the reconciliation, the balance sheet, and the year-to-date revenue and expense report, which appeared in your packet. Is there a motion to approve those three financial reports as presented? Nagel moves to approve the financial reports, reconciliation, balance sheet, and revenue and expense. Is there a second? I much seconds. Any questions or discussion items that like to highlight or point out? Uh, nope, I have all my notes on the report, so uh, I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going
page of strategic skills and then another small yep. list that came by email late yesterday. Um, so please uh, include all in your motion for approval. Any bills that are noteworthy? I have a statement of the e rate. <laughs> so the e rate is a federal program that we're a part of every year. Um, basically, you get a certain amount from the federal government and you get five years to spend for the visit. And it's for technology, basically, anything behind the, the wall that has Larry Tennis. So, like, you're going to need to update um, the what is it, wireless points when you're having problems with everyone on Zoom and different things like that. So, it's something to keep in that experience. Um, and most of the time, I think you really just take care of it all. Like, we award them the contract, they get all, they get the grant, everything, but this shouldn't be changed it. So, it has to look really cool to see the bill that we have to now apply for a reimbursement. All but a certainty that you will be reimbursed. Yes. Have been yeah. there. It's, yes. It's not. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be for the, the this bill, the twenty five, or the fifty percent of the. 25. It would be fifty percent of that. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so then it's one of those things where it's a five year program. So like this year, we didn't have anything. So then next year, you know, or this, you have five years to use you know, the whole. So we just do the small chunk of it's available. So. Um, it was used a lot in the, all the extra wiring and everything around the elementary, especially. And we, the, the part that we have to pay or the, that we contribute that, that's budgeted each year. Yeah. Yep. 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 It's good. This is twice as much as, in the, as our budget. Exactly. Exactly. But it'll, it'll be reused. Okay. Any other questions on that or any other item on the bills? Either those that are in your packet or the few that were received late yesterday. See, we do have a motion, right? Or not? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, is there a motion to approve the bills to be paid as presented both in our packet and via email yesterday? I'm but moves to approve the bills. Is there a second? A fourth, second. Any discussion? Any further questions? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Our next regular meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March the 8th, 2022. Any issues with that date? If not, um, so between deadlines okay. <laughs> all right so it will be here okay but just so you're aware We'll have a visitor. Okay. Not a big deal. All right. Um, anything for the good of the order? We haven't heard much from our principals today. Welcome back, Mrs. Sells. Oh, good. I'm not in my house prison. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the civic pool on Sunday night, so I had to stay home yesterday. That's what I said. I was like, I know. When I went into the hospital on my surgery, I was in this room. I said I felt like the boy at the bubble. We signed COVID, and people like could barely. <laughs> All right, with that, I don't believe there's any policy that it says that our board meetings have to last longer than 45 minutes. So, um, thank you all. For oh, you want to tell us to talk? You have to give me a talk. Okay. All right, with that, um, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 7 41 a.m. Thank you, everyone. It's a great day, but there's plenty of time to stay for a little tour if there's anything that. Mr. Schiller, they're going to get to the bathroom. Uh, he went up to the <laughs> <laughs>